Okay, Mike, so when farmers are financial planning, uh, what do you think is a real common mistake that they make on their farm? Well, I think probably the most common mistake is the, the fact that they probably don't do a lot of financial planning. Okay. That they, um, they might not have the records that, would, that they should perhaps have, you know, the, the, the right, actually the financial statements that would allow them to do the financial planning. Um, assuming they have a nice set of financial statements to work from, and I would encourage anybody to you know engage a, a bookkeeper or a CA or a CGA to you know to just help them pull together the the financial records and you know do a do an annual financial presentation. It's important obviously to, to do the taxes too, but I think a, a financial statement plays a different role. Yeah, assuming they have good financial statements, um, you know, I think it's just understanding the, the, the whole planning process, looking at cost structure, you know, how did our expenses change from one year to the next. Right. That's a pretty easy exercise to do if, you're, if your financial statements are kind of laid out in the same format. Really, you can just kind of look year by year and do a, a pretty relatively simple comparison. Last year, vet expenses were this, this year they're that, what happened? Right. We're down, but don't you think that farmers are real uh, entrepreneurs at heart Very in many cases? So. And so, Absolutely. even outside of agriculture, entrepreneurs really do a lot of this stuff in their heads. Sometimes to their detriment. Mm -hmm. Would you not agree with that? I would totally agree with that. Yes, okay, that they don't they don't put enough on paper, and and maybe they don't bring in the people that they should be bringing in to help pull that plan together because so it how, is all in their head. So how do you transition from? That, uh, that business person or farmer that has everything sort of in their head and they understand their operation, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes they think they do, right? Sometimes they're surprised when we get stuff on paper. Mm -hmm. But how do you make that transition to where you are relying more, at least the numbers are factoring into your decision-making process? Yeah. yeah, well, and I think sometimes just the economic pressures or the industry pressures almost force it to need to be done. I mean, you know, if, if, a, if a company is feeling a, a pinch in cash flow, if an operation's maybe not as profitable as it was, you know, sometimes that's, it's almost forcing the issue. That's, that's one thing that I would say could lead to that. You know, I think transition points are important there too. So as perhaps one generation starts to groom and prepare and coach the next generation to come in, sometimes that's a, um, that's a, a real turning point. And you might see that you know there's different levels of education maybe between generations as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe the son or daughter coming into the operation uh, might have a university degree, whereas maybe the older generation might not have that. So maybe it's through that that edu that formal education too, where you know it's just it's it's so much more than running a farm. You know, it's a science. It's it's the right ag management practices, but it's also recognizing that it is truly an entrepreneurial operation and um, in order to build something to the next for the next generation to pass on I think it's it's we all want to pass on something better than maybe we were given or passing right. you know received in a sense whether that's with our children whether that's um, in our communities you know we kind of want to make the world a better place but you could also say I want to pass on something a little better than I was able to receive and I think that is that that transition point could be a, a, a kind of a black and white turning point to say we have to also understand the importance of financial planning and truly what the benefits of it will be mm -hmm. so, so you mentioned uh, younger people coming into the business mm -hmm. so whether it's Agriculture, or it's the you know oil patch, or it's you know forestry, or whatever the industry. Mm -hmm. When you see young people coming in uh, to the business world, is there something that how they view financial management maybe differently than maybe their their parents did? Is there is there are they different? Um, well, I I might be showing a little bias in my age. I think uh, I think maybe sometimes the new generation coming in, maybe the young twenties, mm -hmm. they're. In a sense, it's kind of a have-it-all generation. You know, they mm -hmm. kind of want it all, but I'm not sure they're maybe as willing or ready to, to work as hard, maybe as right. the, the senior generation would be. You know, I think the, the one piece of advice I would, just from an operational standpoint in that point of transition is, um, for the younger generation, you don't know it all. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this operation has been around for maybe years, decades, generations. 
the f most important thing they could ever do is learn from that that generation that's there today. Yeah. Obviously, it's it's successful. It's been ongoing. The longevity in and of itself proves that there were so many things done right. Don't walk into that situation thinking that you know it all because you don't, and you need to really learn from your elders and and respect that tradition that's been handed down, and then you know, apply maybe what you've learned either by working in enterprise or business or through an education. But, you know, honestly, the most important thing is understand what makes it work and tick from that generation that's been there maybe for 30, 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Then, together collectively as a team, um, what can we do to make this better? So when you look at agriculture, do you look at agriculture as, a, as having a very secure financial future? Yes and no. You know, I guess from a from a yes standpoint, you know, land is a is an invaluable asset. They're and not making more. If there's if there's <laughs> land, they're not making more exactly. So you know, if there's land involved, um, that's always a very good asset to start building on. But it's making the most of that land and making, and by by, by that I'm saying, you know, put it putting it to its best use. You know, fully utilizing the equipment that's that might be on site. Um, making sure that that asset is, from an operational standpoint, producing revenue and uh, producing some amount of profit at the end of the year. You know, farms and ranches and feedlots, they're, they're commercial enterprises. And, you know, the definition of a commercial enterprise is it's there to make money in some form or another. So, you know, I guess from an operational standpoint, that's where the, the trouble can maybe start to be. Uh, I guess that's where the trouble uh, or maybe the greatest challenges would be, but yet the fact that there is that amazing asset in land, that's a foundation to really build on. So I kind of see it as it's a yes answer and a no answer. Do you, do you think the lifestyle part of it gets weaved in too much? Yes, and I think that, um, you know, I think that that lifestyle is, is one of the main reasons people love doing what they do. You know, they, you see generations coming back onto the farm because they really appreciate what that community will do, what that size of environment will be. Um, the legacy is important there too. So, you know, you, you recognize that, um, that this asset, if you would, the farm, the family farm, is something that, that we don't want to lose in our generation. So I think, I think lifestyle, there's so many intrinsic reasons to do it that that takes it kind of beyond the dollars and cents piece that that it is so critical and, and so so rewarding in so many ways right yeah okay thanks mike and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon pleasure thank you